Hey guys, so I was getting all ready to film this video up in my studio, but I was outside reading beforehand and I know the lighting is a little harsh, but it was so beautiful. I was like, I can't do it. I got to stay outside. So here we go. With that said, this is the 24 books that I want to read this year in 2024. I normally read between 100 and 150 books a year, so this is by far not my complete uh, TBR for the year, but it is some books that I'm really interested in checking out. So here we go. The first four books are actually all ones that are part of the entry of the 12 great Christian novels that my wife and I have been reading through from Memoria Press, which is our homeschool curriculum. Um, so first off on that, we have War and Peace. I've read Anna Karenina from Leo Tolstoy and absolutely loved it. So I'm super excited for War and Peace. Hello. No, oh, you're just going to come over. Mm. Okay. All right. Cool. Well, hi. Oh, hold on. You can't hit the mic. <laughs> Next up on that list was uh, Jaber Crow. That's one of Wendell Berry's novels. I haven't read any of Wendell's novels, but I have read um, some of his poetry and some of his essays and freaking loved it all. Um, the man is just wonderful. So I'm hugely stoked to read one of his novels. Um, next up, we had Crime and Punishment. I have read so far only The Brothers Karamazov from Dostoevsky and really liked that. And I know the plot of Crime and Punishment. And so I'm super excited for that one. I heard a talk that uh, Jordan Peterson did about that book and heard the plot summary of it and was like, oh my gosh, I want to read this book so bad. Really, really excited for that one. And then number four is actually a reread. This one I do have a copy of so far. This is going to be Les Miserables. I have read this twice or three times throughout my life. Um, it is constantly in the running of one of my favorite books ever, but Kim has never read this one. So I was going to go ahead and reread it with her because I absolutely love it. And then we're going to watch the movie because the new movie with, uh, Hugh Jackman and I can't remember who else but it's astoundingly good and interesting fact if you didn't know about that movie that was the first uh, musical that they've ever filmed that they were playing the music live in the people's ears so it's always annoyed me with musicals and stuff like I can tell that things are wow your hair bro <laughs> Goodness. I can tell that it's like synced up afterwards, right? And that's always annoyed me, like no matter how good a musical it ever is, it's just has always annoyed me. Uh, but in the whatever years, 2000 something, the version of Les Mis that they did, they actually had little in-ear monitors and they had somebody playing a piano and playing the music the whole time. And the audio is actually them singing on set on the scene. And you can just tell it's like astoundingly different than any other uh, musical that you would ever watch. It's really, really, really cool. If you haven't seen it, I highly recommend uh, that one. So next up, uh, one that I have is going to be this old honking boy. This is The Christian Faith by Michael Horton, um, and it's a systematic theology for pilgrims on the way. This was a gift from my father-in-law, who's a pastor uh, up in Wisconsin, and I am super pumped about this one. Just big old big old honkin' systematic theology book, and I'm really excited about it. And kind of following the theme of that, I'm actually currently reading this guy. This is harder with one hand. Um, <laughs> this is the Founder's Bible. This was um, a gift from my mom, and I've been reading this. I am loving this. This is a special edition Bible from um, David Barton, who is the guy who runs the Wall Builders Foundation. He has the largest single collection of original source documents from the founding of America, the largest private collection in existence. It's like over like a hundred thousand, yeah, over a hundred thousand source documents. And um, so this Bible was something that they specifically put together in order to not ever lose the true history of how Christian the founding of America actually was, despite what all of the modern people want to say and the people rewriting history want to say about how it was not. It's just, it's undeniable um, how dramatically it was driven and shaped and just, just so heavily influenced by the Bible and by Christian thought and uh, yeah, so this is just a wonderful, wonderful resource. I've been reading through this front to back. I just finished uh, Leviticus the other day. So chugging through that one. Next up uh, is one that I don't have. That is Principles of Economics by Seyfedean Amus. It is his kind of like Economics 101 book. 
uh, he wrote the Bitcoin standard and the fiat standard, which are two essential, like must read books. Everybody should read those two books. They are astoundingly good. But he has this big old thick textbooks that is his like kind of one on one class. And I'm really excited to get that one. I am a nerd and I like money stuff. So there's that. Uh, number and nine. He's weird. <laughs> number nine is uh, Plutarch, Plutarch's Lives. Um, this was something that has been mentioned in so many Louis L'Amour stories. And then I recently read Louis's uh, autobiography, Education of a Wandering Man. And he talks some more about Plutarch in there and just saying how many great men throughout history have read Plutarch. And I have never read it. So that's on the list for this year. Oops, you can't hit the mic, bro. <laughs> Number 10, we have Benjamin Franklin by Walter Isaacson. I love Walter Isaacson because his biographies are on, like the term that they use is, is geniuses, but basically almost every single one that he's written a biography on is a polymath, which is what I am wired to be and aspire to be. And so reading stories of them and how they have uh, succeeded in life like Leonardo da Vinci and then now I want to read this Benjamin Franklin one I've also read his uh, uh, his most recent book on Elon Musk and then his also his biography of Steve Jobs and so I'm um, almost having read all of his books so far and really loved all of them uh, Benjamin Franklin I'm super super pumped for he's a very fascinating dude I read his autobiography and absolutely love that Number 11 is Musashi. I am trying to grow in my appreciation of Eastern uh, stories and history and uh, writing in general. Um, and so I've actually tried out some manga things and through that led to the stories of, uh, of Musashi. I, uh, I can't remember his, his name now. I don't know. Super famous sword fighting dude in Japan. And this is like the novelization of his life. So it's a little bit over the top on some things, uh, but really, really want to read that one. Uh, somebody recommended uh, if you liked The Count of Monte Cristo, you would also love Musashi. I think that was, I want to say that was Benjamin McAvoy, maybe. Um, but yeah, excited for that one. Number 12 is Mornings on Horseback. I think I read this book way back when, um, but Teddy Roosevelt is one of my favorite characters in all of history. <laughs> uh, and I've read the, the trilogy about him. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but just want to get another, another book about him. I think he's one of the most fascinating men ever. And uh, just, I can't get enough learning about his life from different perspectives. So Mornings on Horseback, why we'll be checking that one out again this year. Uh, number 13, All the Light We Cannot See. This is going to be another uh, reread for me. I read this book, uh, I don't remember, 2016 or something like that. But again, Kim has not read this one. And so we are going to do this one together with a friend in our little book club. And then we will be watching the Netflix series based on it. Um, so, yeah. Super excited to go through that one. I think I skipped one. I did skip one. Dang it, man. Okay, so technically book number seven is The Body Keeps the Score. This has been one that I've felt like I needed to read for so long. I don't remember how many years. And I finally have it now. And so it's going to be read this year. Now, number 14. <laughs> uh, 14 is, is left of Bang. And I have wanted to read this for a long time. Okay, bye. Uh, yeah, so Left of Bangs book, another one that I've wanted to read for a lot of years, um, but one of my brothers just ended up reading it, and one, he loved it and recommends it, so that's a thing, but also two, it's really hard for me to have books that my brothers who don't read have read that I haven't read, so that one like immediately went to the top of the <laughs> I need to read this now list. Uh, number 15 is Augustine's Confessions. I have been loving reading some older uh, church father's <laughs> writings um and that's kind of one of like the most classic ones and so i know that's a big heady book um but i'm kind of obviously not super afraid of big heady books so we're gonna be we're gonna be trying to go for that one this year number 16 i just found this at the library the other day this is called the word how we translate the bible and why it matters literally saw it read the title read the subtitle was like that sounds sick 
I want to read that. So that's that one. <laughs> 18 or 17. Uh, number 17 is Flow by Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. This is another book that I should have read. I've known about it for like decades and I feel like I know everything that it says because I've heard a bunch of other people talk about it on a gajillion other different books and podcasts and whatever, but I've never actually read the book. So goal this year is actually read the book. And same thing goes for number 18. This is Your Money or Your Life. Jesse Meacham, who is the guy who started YNAB, has said for years that this was his favorite money book ever bar none, and I have wanted to read it for over a decade and still haven't managed to get around to it, so that's going on the list for this year as well. Number 19 is going to be this guy, The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. Um, Again, trying to expand my appreciation of Eastern stories. Um, and I'm going to be honest, like the, the names are really what's hard for me. I like, I feel like I can't say them properly. And so then I feel like I just lose track of them. And I'm like, honestly, I'm intimidated, not because this thing is big, literally just because of the names of stuff which is lame, so <laughs> we're gonna push past that. Uh, but Murphy Napier on BookTube here uh, loves this series, highly recommends it, and for the most part, I find that almost everything that she loves, I, if I have tried it, I really enjoy it as well. So I really wanna pick up this series and get into that. Number 20 is a book called Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. This was a recommendation from a friend of mine who said that this book has some of the most well-written fight scenes that he has ever read. And I was like, well, all right, we're doing it. Number 21 is The Seven Basic Plots. This goes back again to a book that I've known about my whole life, but just never gotten around to reading, but I really want to. I want to understand storytelling better. Um, it's just really fascinating to me. And I like writing, I like reading. I want to be able to engage with books better and review them better and share information better for you guys. And yeah, so. That one's going on the list too. 22 is Richard Wilbur's New and Collected Poems. This was a recommendation from Andrew Peterson, who wrote The Wingfeather Saga and who also wrote a book called Adorning the Dark, which is one of my favorite nonfiction books. Uh, I just like Andrew Peterson is who I want to be when I grow up. And he, in Adorning the Dark, said, buy Richard's book right now and read it before you finish reading this book, which I didn't do because I'm not a super strict rule follower, <laughs> but I really want to get that book and read it now. Also because poetry is hard and I need to do hard things. So I'm reading more poetry. Number 23 is Mama Bear's Guide to Sexuality. I read Mama's Bear, or Mama Bear Apologetics last year, year before last year, I think. Um, and really liked that as just a great like, starting off point um, for uh, for apologetics and for especially for teaching kids and, and approaching the subject with kids. And so they have this newer one out now that is The Guide to Sexuality and Good Lord in 2024. Yeah, we need that. So, yeah. And finally, number 24 uh, is going to be The 48 Laws of Power. This is one of those books that I feel like everybody has read, um, but I haven't, and I want to be able to have a uh, knowledgeable conversation about it. Um, there is, there's always a balance with books that everybody has read, uh, with trying to discern if there are ones that I feel like are worth my time reading or not, and there are certain ones that 1000% are not, <coughs> fourth wing. Uh, but this is one that I feel like would be worth the time to read it and uh, just be able to understand more of, of what the, I forget the guy who writes it now, but whatever, what he has to say so that I can talk to people about it. So there you go. That's 24 books that I want to read this year. Obviously I will read more than that, but hopefully I can bust through those. Um, let me know if you guys are interested in any of those. I have links all the time in the description where you can purchase these. Those are all affiliate links from Amazon, so they help support the channel. And yeah, give me a comment. Let me know what you guys are looking forward to reading and hopefully I'll get some recommendations from that. So, all right, peace.